Hello there, in this video we will add collisions to our game. Let's get started. To implement collisions, we will use collision objects that are provided by default. They are components used to give physical behavior to game objects, meaning they have physical properties like weight and friction. But for our game, we won't be using any of those properties, as we only really need simple physics, and we will be handling them ourselves through message passing. Let's add a collision object component to our ball prototype. We'll start with that one. Let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, so let's add the collision object. We're gonna set the type to trigger, which means that we're only gonna record hits and those hits will notify us through a message. If we wanted to use default physics engines, we would have to use so the other types, either static or dynamic. Kinematic and trigger means we're gonna handle physics ourselves. Trigger is the most lightweight type and will suit perfectly for this game. As mentioned, kinematic would also work in this case, but we don't need fine grained control over the physics of the objects. So that's why we're gonna go with the lighter one. So that's trigger. As usual, we're gonna leave a link in the description below if you want to read further, and we highly recommend it. The docs are really well written in general, but specifically to this topic as well. Next, uh, we need to add a shape to the collision object uh, because this is a, a ball, we're gonna go with the sphere, and we want to set the diameter to something slightly smaller than the sprite. So in this case, 31 works relatively well. Now, let's go ahead in the, to the main collection and create some walls. This is for the ball to actually collide with something and, and to prevent it from going out of bounds. This is an alternative to the approach we went with for the paddles where we implemented this via code. This time we're gonna rely on the collision objects to actually handle this for us. So for the ball's collisions, let's add a game object in the main collection. We're gonna call it top underscore wall and we're gonna position it to X, the X to 640, which is just the middle of the screen. And we're gonna go with the Y for 650. And that's because we want it to be slightly, if you notice, slightly off the screen. And, and we're gonna see why in a sec, once we add the shape. Uh, oh, and there's a typo here. So let's just make sure it's actually top. There we go. Uh, next, same as we did with the ball, we're gonna add the collision object. And again, we're only gonna be using trigger for this tutorial series, so let's go with that. Next, we need to add the shape. So this time we're gonna go with a box. And as you can see, the dimensions are not really working yet, but because we want this to go all, all the way across the screen width, we're gonna set the, the, the width dimensions to 1280. And the, the height is fine as, as 20. The depth is not really used here, so it's fine. The reason why we chose 650 as the Y position, the Y axis, sorry, for these, the game object is because of the height. The height by default is 20, so we're just gonna leave it like that. Uh, this way, let's just zoom in, and we see that the top wall is just right out of the screen. We're gonna see how it works in once we implement the logic. So let's continue adding the collision objects. Okay, now for the bottom wall, we can actually just copy and paste the top wall rename it and we'll call it bottom underscore wall. And all we need to do is just change the Y axis. So instead of 650, which is 10 more than the screen's height, we're gonna set it 10 below the bottom bound. So that would be minus 10. And again, this is half of the box's height, given that the pivot point is in the center of the object, right? And we're done with the walls. Before we implement the logic, we also need to add collision objects to the paddles. That way, you know, we can bounce off, the, the ball can bounce off the, the actual paddles, and we can actually implement the gameplay logic, right? So let's start with the left paddle. We're gonna go ahead and add a collision object. Also, so I'm gonna set it to trigger. And we add the shape, and it's also going to be a box. Now for the dimensions, we also want them to be slightly smaller than the sprite. So the width, we're gonna set it to 28 and the height should be 
okay with 120 now let's go ahead and zoom in a bit so we can actually see it and yeah, there we go i think that works we'll probably look at collisions deeper in a separate video we're gonna improve them because this is gonna be like a very sim fairly simple implementation uh, so this will should work for now we'll test it at the end okay so this we should be ready with the left paddle let's go ahead and we can actually just copy and paste the collision object from the left paddle and paste it inside the right paddle and that should be good enough we're ready now to start implementing the collision logic because the ball is the one reacting to collisions we're going to implement the logic in its script so let's go ahead and open that up scripts ball movement script there we go we're going to start by adding some constants for example we'll need the constant for the message as we discussed default will send us a message once the objects collide so let's go ahead the actual message is collision underscore response so let's create a constant for that uh, okay it's that one but we need it we're gonna have it uppercase for the actual constant so collision response and this is going to be the hash of this there we go and because we'll we'll need to compare the ids we get from the collisions to determine what kind of objects the ball is colliding with so we're also going to create constants for those ids although they look more like urls in this case but we'll just create one for the top wall which is going to be the url so slash top underscore wall and let's go ahead and do that for the four game objects we added collision objects to. So that would be the bottom wall and then the two paddles. And then right paddle. There we go. And we should be ready with the constants. Okay, just so you know, default has great documentation on collision messaging. And as usual, again, we're going to leave the description below. Okay, with the constants in place, let's move on to the logic. First, we're going to have to add the on message function. So we'll go ahead and just add that function on message and we're gonna pick this one at the end the keyword here so first we need to actually check if the message id is in fact a collision response so let's start by just doing that if message id equals collision response of the case yep then same. yep okay let me just um get rid of the panel there and let's just make this a bit there we go okay so we're gonna store the audit id i'm gonna just discuss what it is in a bit so let's just create a local variable for the other id which comes under the message so this is the actual id that we're colliding with that the ball is colliding with so this is the object we have to compare and we're gonna be using it elsewhere so just to avoid doing message dot other id everywhere we're just gonna create a local variable here Okay, let's go ahead and see if it's a wall first let's check if it's a wall so if it's the top wall or if it's the bottom wall so bottom wall okay then okay this is our first check so what, what do we want it to happen right like if if it hits a wall we want it to bounce like opposite where it was going right but only in one axis we want to flip the direction, right? It's going in the y-axis. Let's just go ahead and do that. So we're going to get the direction, right? That's We have a direction object, so let's just flip it. So the direction object is going to be in the y-axis. We're going to change. We're going to only change the y-axis here. So Yeah, and then we're just going to, to flip it, we just multiply it by minus one. I guess we can actually test this now. Let's go ahead and just run this. And there we go. We see that it's actually doing what we would expect. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and add the same thing for the paddles. So we can actually test the bottom wall. Let's add another if. Just going to copy and paste this one again. Okay, so else if. So we'll just set for the paddles here. So if it's less left paddle or the right paddle. We want to do the same thing basically, but for the x-axis, right? We want it to go in the other direction, but for the x-axis. 
Okay, now we should have working collisions now. Let's see if they actually, awesome. Yeah, they seem to be working quite well. There's one more issue, right? I think, and it, there we go. We saw it there. And this is because the collisions happen too quickly. So every time we get a message, we're flipping the direction. It seems that it just stays there forever, right? Until it actually goes off the paddle. So what we need to do is check that we can only collide with an object once, right? So how we're going to do this is we're going to store the other ID that we've reacted to. Let's call it previous other ID, like here at the end of the if. And we're going to store the other ID. We're just going to keep track of the ID. We're not initializing this anywhere else, but that's fine. Because how we're going to be using it here, we're only, we're going to check. We're going to check that same thing. And if it's the same as the other ID that we've initialized there, then all we need to do is ignore it. Right? So let's try and replicate this. It's not that easy, but there we go. In those scenarios, it would have, there would have been an issue there. Now it does look a bit off, but as I mentioned, one, we're going to continue with the game, finish it. And the very next video after that is going to be improving the collisions. Uh, yeah, that's it for this video. We implemented simple collisions in our game. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the series so far. And leave a comment if you have any feedback. We really appreciate it and we're looking to improve just to keep providing high quality content to, for you. Uh, yeah, see you in the next one.